Including speed work in your training alongside building new mileage is one of the easiest ways for a new runner to get injured. So the short answer is that no, you should not be including speed work in your training as you are beginning and increasing your miles from week to week. So essentially the best way to go about your training when you're training for perhaps a race on the next distance spectrum, such as a half marathon, a marathon, you really want to just be running those easy miles. And if you're someone who is loving the easy mileage, loves going out and embracing that slow, easy run, then you should continue what you're doing. You're going to be seeing incredible gains just by doing that easy running, building stamina, aerobic endurance, and getting faster, you can go a pretty long time with building a consistent base like that until you actually need to start adding in more elements of speed work. But what if you want a little bit more variety in your running? I mean, trust me, I totally get it. Running fast is really fun. And for many of you who've maybe been coming from a different sport or do a lot of hit cardio or something like that, then you're used to wanting to go all out and interject that speed. So even though we're not gonna be talking about doing track intervals, anything like that early on or running tempo runs that are a long, hard effort, we can still have opportunities to interject some speed into your running as a beginner runner. And in the end, if you're not finding joy in your running, then what's the point? I mean, you're not going to continue with it if it's not something that you like to do. So we want to find the balance of making sure that you are properly training that's going to keep your body healthy and strong, but also giving you opportunities to have a little bit more excitement and fun with your running where you feel strong and powerful and just love winning the day out there on your run. So let's talk about a few quality workouts that you can safely include in your training that are going to be able to interject some speed and a little bit more effort than you're going to be getting from the slow, easy run. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about is strides. So I have a full video on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and link that. A lot of people get pretty confused about how to do the stride, but they're actually really, really simple. So what you're gonna do is go out like you would for your normal easy run. Let's say you're going out for four miles, you're gonna complete your easy run, you're gonna stop, and then it's time to perform your strides. So what you're gonna do on a stride, this is just a short burst of speed, sometimes called an acceleration or a surge, and you're going to start out by accelerating get to close to top speed, not an all out sprint, but maybe 90 to 95% of your top speed. So accelerate to get to that. And then you're going to hold that for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then you're going to decelerate. So they're only about 25 to 30 seconds in length. So you will go out, do the stride, and then you turn around and you walk back and then you do it again. So you want to think about having equal parts of the stride and the walk back. The distance is the same. The time is not. It's obviously going to take you longer to get back when you're walking. So that's your recovery portion. So the workout that I want to rec recommend for you to do initially is start with two to four strides at the end of an easy run. And you can do that for a couple of weeks and then you can start to build on and add one more stride. And really, if you're just putting these into your runs one to two times a week, you're going to see a lot more increase in your speed over time. It takes a while, but I promise it works if you're consistent and you stick with it. And plus, they're just really fun. And you'll probably look forward to doing them each week when you're completing those easy runs. All right, another safe way to include speed as a beginner runner, these are a little bit more advanced than strides. So I would say go ahead and start with strides initially, and then you can move into adding fartleks once a week. Yes, that's that funny word. And I think it just makes people a little bit intimidated hearing that, thinking that it's much more difficult than it is. When in actuality, fartleks are actually one of the most simple ways to include speed work in your running. There's really no right or wrong way to do these. And it's really just about interjecting some speed speed. In fact, the word means speed play. So interjecting some speed into your easy runs. So what you're going to do, let's say again, you're going out for that four mile run and you want to include some fartlek running inside of that easy running. So you could do something after your warm up where you're doing a workout perhaps of one minute on and two minutes off. So that's what you're really thinking about with fartleks. It's more about effort and thinking about an on effort versus an off effort or a hard versus an easy effort. And so when you're doing those one minute on, two minute off, then you're thinking about going hard for one minute, not all out. I would say this is about a six to seven rate of perceived exertion. And then when you're done with that, then you're going to spend two minutes doing that recovery jog. So you can do it time-based like that. And there's really, again, no 
exact way to do this. You can kind of focus on doing less amount of speed, more recovery in the beginning, then you can move more to equal parts. So one of the most fun ways to include fartlicks in your running that you don't even have to spend too much time thinking about is just you see something in the distance and you say to yourself, all right, I'm gonna run hard to that tree. And then after that, you can have as much recovery as you want. You see something else and you say, I'm gonna run hard to that stoplight. And then maybe you get to the stoplight and you turn around and you have recovery again. And then you see something else in the distance you wanna run to. So that's what I would recommend, how to include a little bit of speed play in your running as a beginner. And it's just really fun and exciting and maybe gets you a little bit more looking forward to your run than just the typical easy run. Okay, so the last one that I wanna talk about is really more of what I refer to as a quality session as opposed to a speed workout. So these are hill repeats. So you are not going to be going any faster when you're going up the hill as you would be on the flat surface. Instead, you wanna keep that same pace. So let's say you're going out for your easy run and you're running at your easy pace and then you get to the hill that you wanna do your repeats on. You're gonna go ahead and start running up that hill, try to maintain the same pace, but your effort is going to increase. So that's where you are increasing intensity on this type of workout without increasing speed. So you'll hear over and over in the future, I'm sure if you haven't already, that hills are speed work in disguise. So you really don't have to increase speed. There will be a time and a place in your future to do speed intervals up hills, but that's not what these are right now. You just wanna do hill repeats where you're increasing your effort but you're keeping the same pace. I promise you by the time you get to the top of the hill, your heart is going to be beating faster, you're going to be breathing harder, and you're definitely going to be feeling that increased effort and ready to run down the hill so you can relax a little bit. So here's the workout that I want you to do as a beginner with your hill repeats. You're going to do two sets of five by one minute up the hill. So essentially you're going to run up that hill for one minute, and you wanna choose something that's a mid-grade hill. So steep enough where it's noticeable that it's a hill, but not too steep that your form is being compromised. So that's the hill I would recommend. It does not need to be perfect, but just something that you just say, yes, that's a hill right there and it's not too steep. That's where I'm gonna do my hill repeats. So you're gonna go and run up that hill for 60 seconds. You're gonna have that labored breathing. You're gonna to try to keep the same pace as you would on that flat surface without overdoing it. And then you're gonna turn around and you are going to comfortably run down the hill. So you want to let gravity help you out a little bit, but you shouldn't be running hard down the hill and you can run at an easier pace than what you were running up the hill. Okay, and then you get to the bottom and same thing. You're gonna run up the hill. Again, thinking about that easy pace that you would normally have, but it's not feeling easy because you're running up the hill. So you're gonna do five of those, one minute each. Then you're gonna take a five minute recovery where you can jog or you can walk around if you want. And then you're gonna do that set again. So I would recommend that as a starting point. And as time goes on, you could increase those repeats to 90 seconds, two minutes, or doing maybe another set of those ones that I mentioned. So definitely adding in hills to your training is an incredible way to increase your strength as a runner and get faster over time as well. So the last thing I wanna say is just to remember that you still should have a major focus on easy running as a new runner. So 80% is usually the rule of thumb for all runners of easy running. As a new runner, it's even more like 90% or more. So even though you can be interjecting some of these safe ways to include speed, you still want that focus to be on aerobic running, which is conversational. Now, my caveat for marathon runners is you need to be even more mindful. You're probably adding way more mileage than you've ever done before. If this is your first one, perhaps double or more than the type of mileage you've done in the past. And so you just wanna be extra careful with ever adding in any extra quality sessions beyond the easy running that you would be doing. So if that's you and you wanna make sure that you are doing everything correctly to safely get to the starting line, ready to run your race in a healthy way, then I'm gonna go ahead and put my information below so you can reach out about possible coaching or a customized training plan to make sure that you are getting some of the speed that you are looking forward to in a way that's also going to train you appropriately for your race and keep you healthy along the way.